This is a really remarkable story. Daniel Kish lost his sight to a rare form of cancer called retinoblastoma. And because of the cancer, when he was only 13 months old, his eyes had to be removed. So throughout his entire life, Daniel Kish never really saw the world the way that most of us do. But his blindness also allowed him to appreciate the world far more than most people would. Now the thing is, Daniel could see, but not in a traditional sense. Because ever since he was young, Daniel was able to develop the ability to see and sense his environment by by simply making clicking sounds with his tongue. And depending on where he was, the click's volume varies. He says that he discovered how clicking his tongue helped him identify his surroundings at the age of two. He even confessed that one night when he was young, he climbed out of his bedroom window to explore the other side of the fence and wandered into a neighbor's backyard simply by mapping out his environment with his clicks. Eventually, he managed to make it a few blocks away from his home and had to be brought back by his bewildered parents by the police. Basically, Daniel has become a less violent version of Daredevil. Daniel calls his clicks flash sonar, but it is more commonly known as echolocation. This is an ability that is really not uncommon. For example, bats use it to help them detect prey and maneuver through their environment in the dead of night. Dolphins and whales also use sound waves and echolocation to swim through the vastness of the ocean and find each other. Essentially, echolocation works two ways. The first is due to the location of our ears. You'll notice that your ears are conveniently located on the sides of our heads. Now, this may seem really trivial, but there's a reason for it. You see, when there's sound coming from the side, like a slamming door or the rustling of leaves, it reaches the ear closest to it and allows the brain to process the information a millisecond before it reaches the other ear. And this fraction of time allows us to quickly identify the sound and the source without looking. For example, we rarely turn the wrong way when we hear our name being called out in the crowd. And this is because we do not simply just hear the sound, we hear it in 3D, which allows us to build a detailed auditory map of our environment. The second way it works for humans is that, believe it or not, we can hear better than we can see, even if we have perfect vision. And that's because our brains have 10, if not 100 times more processing power to identify sounds, whereas our vision actually limits us to a small percentage of the varieties of light. Even the sharpest of human eyes can neither see the ultraviolet nor the infrared spectrum, but our auditory senses, however, allows us to hear a range of 10 octaves. Anyway, Daniel opted to go to regular schools and graduated with a 4.0 average in high school. He said, I didn't realize I was exceptional independent or behaving unconventionally for a blind person. I went to a mainstream school with extra support and was never bullied. In fact, my ability to navigate by clicks brought me kudos. By the time he finished high school, Daniel was voted most likely to succeed and indeed he did. It was also during his time in college that he was able to harness the full potential of his ability to echolocate. Now, despite what you may think, Daniel does not uncontrollably click away just to get around. He uses his clicks quite sparingly and adapts it to his environment. And over the years, he has learned how to control its volume volume to avoid being judged by the sighted community and still process it with great accuracy. When he's outdoors, he can make a loud click to map out his environment and even identify buildings from a thousand feet away. He can also tell the difference between pickup trucks, an SUV, a passenger car, which may explain his uncanny ability to ride his bike and effortlessly weave through traffic. He said, my friends rode bikes and I wanted to too. So I taught myself by riding next to a wall and clicking to stay in a straight line. Gradually, I was able to ride to school into friends' houses on my own using echolocation. And it's really incredible because in parking garages or a packed auditorium, Daniel can even locate and exit faster than those who use their eyes. With a master's degree in developmental psychology and special education emphasizing on perceptual development, family dynamics, and children at risk, Daniel established a World Access for the Blind in 2000, a nonprofit organization that challenges all forms of blindness throughout the world through positive psychology, person-centered instruction, and public education, among many other methods. But even with him being a primary example, it has always been an uphill battle to have his methods accepted by mainstream organizations that aid the visually impaired, especially educating and raising children who are sight impaired. While Daniel does admit that learning echolocation is not easy, and only about 10% of those who learn it has their abilities enriched, he still maintains that echolocation is worth the steep learning process, saying, running into a pole is a drag, but even running into a pole is a disaster. Paying is part of the price of freedom. The largest organization for the blind in the U.S. does not endorse Daniel's work and methods. According to John John Parade, the organization's executive director for strategic initiatives, the federation urges people to use long white cane and that echolocation for most blind people is not worth the effort required to understand and practice it. And to him, Daniel is just really unique. But despite the obstacles set by an organization designed to help people with this impairment, Daniel is determined to change things in his community, saying that the blindness field is based and is very slow to evolve. It's been traditionally dominated by sighted people who feel the need to tell 
tell blind people what to do. So really, kudos to Daniel for standing up for what he believes in, and I totally support him. Like seriously, echolocation does sound like something that is incredibly difficult to learn, but at least to me, the efforts you put in and what will you get in return? I mean, Daniel is riding a bike in traffic. But anyway, incredible individual, amazing story. And I have the link to his organization in my description box as well. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.